All right, get ready to explore Killarney National Park in County Kerry, Ireland. Sounds amazing. You know, you sent over a ton of travel blogs and official guides. Oh, and a brochure for a horse-drawn carriage ride. That's right. That caught my eye. Yeah, it looks so charming. You're really doing your research. I am. I can't wait for this trip. So let's dive into all this information and uh, figure out why this park is a must-see. Sounds like a plan. Okay, so how do we even get there? Well, the good news is Killarney National Park is pretty accessible. That's great. You can drive there taking the N22 from Cork or the N72 from Trey Lee. Okay, and I know I mentioned driving, but public transport is an option too, right? Absolutely. Cool. Ireland has a surprisingly good public transportation system, especially for a country known for its, well, you know, rolling green hills. Right. Irish Rail connects Killarney with all the major cities, and Bus Arian covers a wider range of locations. Okay, that's good to know. So you can easily make this a car-free trip if you want. <laughs> you could even fly into Cork or Shannon Airport. Those are your closest options. Okay, flying is always an option. Yeah. But one thing that stood out to me from the visitor's guide is that the park is huge E. Oh, yeah, it is. Seriously sprawling, so whether you're driving, biking, or even taking taxis, you really got to factor in travel time between the different spots. It's not a place you want to rush, that's for sure. No, definitely not. Now, you mentioned wanting to figure out why this park is a must-see, and I think the answer lies in the incredible variety of experiences it offers. Okay, I'm intrigued. You've got these grand Victorian estates, cascading waterfalls. And medieval castles. And serene lakes. All in one park. All in one park. Wow. And reading through these travel blogs, I'm seeing a real blend of history, nature, and adventure, sure. especially when they mention the Gap of Dunlow. Yeah, the Gap of Dunlow. It really is like a choose-your-own-adventure novel come to life. Okay, I am so ready for this. Let's start with a little bit of that grandeur you mentioned. Okay. Imagine stepping back in time to the 19th century. I'm trying, I'm trying. You're at Muckross House, this beautiful Victorian mansion surrounded by these meticulously designed gardens. The photos in this guide are unbelievable. They are. And I read in one blog that the house was actually home to several prominent families over the years. Oh, that's right. I read that too. What stories those walls could tell? Well, they do offer guided tours. Really? Yeah, you can walk those very halls, mm -hmm. you know, learn all about the families who live there, the architecture and the whole social scene of that era. Oh, that sounds amazing. Definitely adding that to the must-do list. Good choice. Okay, now for something a bit more wild. Okay, I like where this is going. One blog describes hiking through lush forest trails to torque waterfall, you know, like actually feeling the spray of the water on your face. Vivid imagery. I know, right? You can practically feel it. They painted quite the picture. Torque waterfall. That's a spot you don't want to forget your camera for. Noted. And, you know, it's not just about the waterfall itself. It's about the whole experience of getting there. Oh, tell me more. The hike itself offers some pretty amazing views. Yeah. And the sound of the water rushing as you get closer. Oh, my God. It just adds to the whole sense of anticipation. It really does. And what I love about this park is the diversity of experiences, sometimes even within a single attraction. What do you mean? Well, like with Torque Waterfall, you can take a leisurely stroll along those well-maintained paths. Okay. Or you could venture off the beaten path for, you know, a more challenging hike. So it really caters to all levels. Exactly. It all depends on your comfort level and what kind of experience you're looking for. That's so cool. So are you ready for a little medieval mystery? Always. Good, because we got to talk about Ross Castle. Yes. It's this 15th century fortress right on the shores of Loch Lean. One of the park's famous lakes. That's right. I read somewhere that it wasn't just a residence. It was actually a key strategic point during some pretty important events in Irish history. It was. Even besieged a couple of times. Imagine that. Can you imagine being a soldier stationed there back then? Oh, the stories you could tell. Talk about a view with a side of adrenaline. I know, it's giving Game of Thrones vibes. A little bit. Speaking of views, you mentioned boat trips on the lakes and the pictures in this brochure. They're just breathtaking, so peaceful. <sighs> yes, the lakes of Killarney. Laughlin, Muckross Lake, Upper Lake. Each with their own unique character. I can't wait to experience that tranquility. You know, you should keep an eye out for Innisfallen Island. In this fallen island, what's that? It's this peaceful oasis on Laughlin with ancient ruins and some of the oldest yew trees in all of Europe. 
Who knew? See, this is what I love about these deep dives. What's that? There's always something new to discover. I'm learning so much. It's like peeling back the layers of a fascinating story. All right, let's move on to something a bit more rugged. The Gap of Dunlow. Okay, for those who want a little more action than a leisurely boat ride. Exactly. The Gap of Dunlow is this narrow mountain pass yeah. carved out by glaciers centuries ago. Wow. It cuts right through the heart of the McGillicuddy's Reeks, the highest mountain range in Ireland. That's incredible. It's a hiker's paradise. Oh, I can imagine. But you can also cycle through it or even take a jaunting car ride. Wait, tell me more about those jaunting cars. They look like something out of a movie. Picture this, a traditional horse-drawn carriage. Okay, I'm picturing it. Often painted in these bright colors, a friendly local driver narrating the sights as you clip-clop along. Oh, that sounds amazing. It's the quintessential Killarney experience. I'm adding that to my list. Good choice. Okay, before we get too carried away with all the activities, we have to talk about those abbey ruins you mentioned. Oh yes, Muckross Abbey. They sound intriguing. It's a 15th century Franciscan friary, now in ruins. But still worth visiting? Oh, absolutely. Why? It's unbelievably atmospheric. Imagine walking through those weathered stone archways surrounded by ancient yew trees. Wow, I can almost feel the peacefulness. It's a place for quiet reflection, you know, connecting with history. I love that. One blog also mentioned a charming stone cottage called Dennis Cottage, right on the shores of Muckross Lake. Dennis Cottage. It has this cozy cafe, perfect for a break. Okay, so we've got majestic estates, cascading waterfalls, mysterious castles, peaceful lakes, rugged mountain passes, and even ancient ruins. What else could this park possibly offer? Oh, just wait till you hear about the wildlife. Okay, tell me everything. Killarney is teeming with all sorts of fascinating creatures. Like what? From majestic red deer to soaring white-tailed eagles. Hold on, did I read somewhere that there are rare orchids in the park too? You did. Wow. Killarney is home to some of the most diverse flora and fauna in Ireland. It's a real haven for nature lovers. Okay, I am officially hooked. <laughs> well, you. But before we dive into all the amazing wildlife encounters waiting for us in Killarney, let's take a quick break. Sounds good. When we get back, we'll talk about the different creatures we might encounter and the best ways to experience the park's natural wonders. Looking forward to it. Me too. <laughs> okay, we're back. And I have to say, I'm already picturing myself wandering through those gardens at Muckross House. Oh, they're incredible. But there's one thing I'm really excited to talk about. The wildlife. Oh, yes. You mentioned red deer and eagles. Mm -hmm. But I feel like there's so much more to discover. You're right. Killarney's wildlife is about the entire ecosystem, not just the big charismatic creatures. Right, like those orchids I read about. Yeah, exactly. And not just any orchids. These are rare purple orchids. They thrive in the park's unique habitat. I bet they're a sight to behold. Oh, absolutely. It's those little details, those unexpected encounters that make a trip memorable. Couldn't agree more. And speaking of special, did you know that Killarney is actually a designated UNESCO Biosphere Reserve? No, I didn't. Yeah, it's recognized internationally for its biodiversity and conservation efforts. That's pretty impressive. It is. So for someone visiting the park, what kind of wildlife encounters might they have? Well, besides the red deer, which are practically iconic in Killarney, you might spot a sick -a deer sick -a deer They're smaller, more elusive, but equally captivating. Okay, I'll keep an eye out for them. And if you're really lucky, you might spot a pine marten. A pine marten? What's that? They're sleek, agile creatures, kind of like a cross between a ferret and a squirrel. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm adding that to my mental checklist. Yeah. Now, what about birds? I'm a bit of a bird watcher myself, and those white-tailed eagles you mentioned sound incredible. They're a sight to behold. Killarney is one of the best places in Ireland to see them. Amazing. But don't overlook the smaller birds, either. Oh, of course not. The park is alive with songbirds, robins, wrens. You might even hear the drumming of a great spotted woodpecker. I'm definitely packing my binoculars for this trip. Good idea. It's amazing to think about all these creatures coexisting in one park. It really makes you appreciate the interconnectedness of nature. Absolutely. And that's something that Killarney does exceptionally well. What's that? It allows you to connect with nature in a very real and tangible way. I like that. It's not just about observing wildlife from afar. It's about feeling a part of that ecosystem. I can't wait. Now, shifting gears a bit. Okay. You know, we've talked about the wildlife, but these sources also mention a rich human history. Oh, right. That connection to the land. Exactly. And for centuries, these lands 
were part of large estates owned by wealthy families. Like Muckers House. Exactly. But there are other historical sites within the park, like Ross Castle, that tell the story of those early inhabitants. And what about the people who actually lived and worked on those estates? There's a fascinating article here that talks about the lives of tenant farmers and workers who relied on the land. They must have had a very different way of life than what we're used to today. Oh, for sure. They farmed the land, fished the lakes, harvested timber. Their lives were deeply connected to the natural rhythms of the park. It's hard to even imagine. I know, it's a glimpse into a different world. So how did the establishment of the National Park affect these communities? It was a period of transition. Some traditional practices, like large-scale timber harvesting, were curtailed to protect the park's ecosystem. That makes sense. But the park also brought new opportunities, particularly in tourism. Oh, right. Many locals found work as guides, boatmen, catering to the growing number of visitors. So it was a balancing act. Exactly. Preserving the environment while providing for the people who called it home. It's fascinating how nature and human history are so intertwined in Killarney. I think that's what makes it so special. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground. We have. But now I want to get practical, you know, the logistics of actually visiting the park. Sure, where to stay, for instance. Yeah, it's a good place to start. Well, you've got options. That's always good. The town of Killarney, just outside the park, offers a wide range of accommodation. From cozy B&Bs to luxurious hotels. Exactly. So you can choose your level of comfort and budget. And staying in Killarney Town gives you easy access to the park entrance. That's right. But if you're looking for a more immersive experience, there are a few unique options within the park itself. Oh, like what? Well, there's the Ross Castle Hotel. Oh, wow. Imagine waking up to views of the castle in Laughlin. That sounds incredible. Talk about a fairy tale setting. I know, right? Are there any other in-park options? You bet. If you prefer a more secluded stay, there are some charming holiday cottages scattered throughout the park. Oh, I love that idea. Peace and quiet, surrounded by nature. Exactly. Okay, now for timing. When's the best time to visit Killarney? Well, Killarney is beautiful year-round. I bet. But each season offers a different experience. Okay, so walk me through the seasons. Spring brings a burst of color with wildflowers, and the air is fresh and invigorating. Sounds lovely. Summer is the most popular time to visit. Long, sunny days, perfect for hiking, boating, exploring. So summer would be ideal for someone who wants to be active. Exactly. But if you prefer a quieter experience and don't mind cooler temperatures, autumn is a great option. Why autumn? The landscape transforms into a tapestry of warm hues as the leaves change color. Oh, that sounds beautiful. There's a certain magic in the air. What about winter? Winter in Killarney is all about tranquility. Yeah, I can imagine. The crowds are thinner, the air is crisp and clean. So peaceful. It's the perfect time for cozy walks. It sounds like there's no wrong time to visit Killarney. You're right, it just depends on what you're looking for. So we've got accommodation and timing figured out. But what about actually planning our days in the park? It's a pretty vast place. Right. Well, I always recommend starting at one of the visitor centers. Okay. There are a few of those, right? Yeah. There are three main ones. Muckross House, Killarney House, and one near the Gap of Dunlow. And what do they offer? They have excellent maps, exhibits, and knowledgeable staff who can answer all your questions. So they can help you create an itinerary based on your interests and time. Exactly. Whether you're into history, wildlife, hiking, or just soaking in the scenery. That's super helpful. It is, and they often have information about guided tours and events happening in the park. So let's say our listener has a few must-see attractions in mind, like Muckross House and Gardens. Okay. What's the best way to experience that? Well, the guided tour is fantastic. Okay. But don't just rush through the house. Take your time to explore those gardens. I was planning on it. They're meticulously manicured lawns, colorful flower beds, hidden pathways. Sounds like a photographer's dream. Oh, it is. Now, what about Torque Waterfall? How do we experience that natural wonder? Well, the waterfall is easily accessible. There's a short trail from the Muckross House car park. Okay. It's a leisurely stroll, suitable for all fitness levels. Perfect. And the sound of the water rushing as you approach is just mesmerizing. I bet. And once you reach the falls, there are viewing platforms where you can take it all in. Awesome. Okay. Next up, Ross Castle. Okay. We talked about its history. But what about actually visiting it? You can take a guided tour, which is a great way to learn about its history. Mm. But for a truly immersive experience, I'd recommend climbing to the top of the tower. 
Oh, wow. Why? The panoramic views of Laughlin and the mountains are just breathtaking. Okay, I'm adding that to the list. Good choice. Now, let's talk about the lakes of Killarney. How can our listener best experience them? Well, you have several options. Okay, lay them on me. You can rent a boat and explore at your own pace. Oh, that sounds relaxing. Or you could join a guided boat tour. Okay, what's the advantage of that? A local expert will share their knowledge of the lake's history, ecology, folklore. Learn something new. And for the more adventurous, there's always kayaking or canoeing. Wow, so many choices. I know, it's amazing. Now, what about Innisfallen Island? Uh, yes, a must visit. Tell me why. You'll feel like you've stepped back in time. How so? It's home to the ruins of an ancient monastery. Wow. And surrounded by some of the oldest yew trees in Europe. It sounds so peaceful. It is truly tranquil and atmospheric. All right, next on my list, the Gap of Dunlow. Okay, one of my favorites. We talked about the scenery and the jaunting cars, but what about hiking or cycling through the pass? It's a popular spot for both activities. I bet. There's a well-marked trail. It's a moderately challenging hike, but worth it. And for cyclists. It's a scenic and exhilarating ride. It's like there's something for everyone. There is. Now, what about Muckross Abbey? What can our listener expect when visiting? Take your time, wander through the ruins, imagine the lives of the Franciscan friars. Wow. Admire the stonework, touch the weathered walls. It's a place of peace and reflection. I can almost feel the history. You will. And finally, Dina's Cottage. Ah, uh, yes. Perfect spot for a break. We mentioned the cafe. Mm -hmm. It's right on the shores of Muckross Lake, so you can enjoy your tea and cake with some serene lake views. And soak in the experience. Exactly. There's also a craft shop. Oh, fun. Where you can find locally made souvenirs. Perfect. You know, as we're talking about all these attractions, I keep thinking back to that choose your own adventure idea. Right. There's just so much to do. And the best part is you can experience it all at your own pace. That's what makes Killarney so special. Exactly. It's a place where you can create your own unique adventure. I love that. All right, we've covered the highlights, talked about how to experience them, even touched on the practicalities of getting there and where to stay. We have. But before we send our listener off on their Killarney adventure, what are some essential tips for making the most of their trip? Okay, first and foremost, pack for all types of weather. Oh, right. Ireland's weather is unpredictable. Exactly. Layers are key. What are the must-haves? A waterproof jacket, comfortable walking shoes, and a hat and gloves no matter what time of year. Good advice. And what about those midges? Ah, yes, the midges. Any tips for dealing with those pesky critters? Insect repellent is a must, and wearing light-colored clothing can help. Okay. And if all else fails, a trusty midge net. Got it. What about other essential gear? A backpack for carrying water, snacks, extra layers, hmm. and a map and compass are good to have, especially if you're venturing off the beaten path. Right. And of course, my camera. Oh, absolutely. You'll want to capture all those stunning landscapes. For sure. Okay, now for timing. What about it? If you're looking to avoid crowds, visit popular spots like Muckross House and Torque Waterfall early in the morning or later in the afternoon. Good tip. And weekdays are generally quieter than weekends. Got it. What about booking tours or activities? Should we do that in advance? It's always a good idea, especially during peak season. Okay, so we've got packing, timing, and booking covered. Any other essential tips? Yes, respect the environment. Oh, of course. Killarney is a national park and a UNESCO biosphere reserve, so leave no trace. Right. Stick to the trails, dispose of waste properly. Exactly, and be mindful of the wildlife. Speaking of wildlife, what are the best ways to observe them responsibly? Keep a safe distance, avoid making loud noises, and never feed them. It's their home. We're just visitors. Exactly. Any final words of wisdom? Yeah, let's hear it. Killarney is a place to be savored, not rushed. I like that. Take your time, soak in the scenery, connect with nature. Immerse yourself in the experience. Exactly. And most importantly, have fun. Killarney sounds like a truly special place. It is. All right, I'm feeling inspired. Let's take a quick break and then wrap up our deep dive with some final reflections. Sounds good to me. Okay, we're back. And wow, I'm ready to book my flight to Killarney right now. I know, right? This park is just incredible. It really is. You know, it's more than just pretty sights. It's got this depth, history, and soulfulness. It does. And it shines through in all these sources. You know, what strikes me is how Killarney balances its ancient roots with a modern appeal. That's a great point. We've got these medieval castles, ancient abbeys, mm. but we're also reading about 
travelers exploring the park on bikes and kayaks, taking these incredible photos. It's like a timeless landscape yes. that's become a canvas for modern adventurers. Exactly. And it makes you think about how our relationship with nature is always evolving. It does. Killarney's beauty has been drawing people in for centuries. Yeah. But the way we experience and interact with it changes with every generation. That raises an interesting question, then. What's that? How do we preserve these natural treasures while also making them accessible to a world that's constantly changing? It's a challenge, but I think Killarney offers a really inspiring example of how to do just that. What do you mean? Well, they've created a space where you can step back in time. Yeah. Immerse yourself in history and nature, mm -hmm. but also embrace modern ways of exploring and appreciating the park. I see what you mean. So for our listener who's now dreaming of their own Killarney adventure, I think it means they have this amazing opportunity to engage with this place on their own terms. They can really make it their own. Exactly. They can delve into the history, lose themselves in the scenery, challenge themselves on the trails, or just find a quiet spot by the lake and soak it all in. So many options. Killarney invites you to create your own personal connection, become a part of its ongoing story. I love that, becoming a part of the story. And that's what makes it so much more than just a tourist destination. Right. It's an experience. It's a place that can stay with you, change you, even inspire you long after you've left. You know, as we've been talking, I've been trying to figure out what it is about Killarney that resonates so deeply. Oh. I think it's that sense of timelessness. Ah, uh, yes. It's a place where you can escape the hustle and bustle, reconnect with something bigger than yourself. Tap into a sense of wonder that's often lost in our everyday routines. You said it perfectly. It's that feeling of being fully present, surrounded by beauty that's endured for centuries. It's a precious gift. It really is. Well, I think we've done Killarney justice. I think so, too. We've explored its history, natural wonders, cultural significance, and even given some practical tips. Hopefully our listener is feeling inspired. I hope so. Before we sign off, though, I want to leave our listener with one final thought. Imagine you've spent the day exploring Killarney National Park. You've hiked to Torque Waterfall, wandered through Muckross Abbey, maybe even taken a boot trip on Loaf Lean. As you're driving away, the sun is setting, casting a golden glow over the mountains. What's the one feeling, the one image you carry with you? Ooh, that's a tough one, but a good one. It is. I think for me, it would be that feeling of peace. Peace. Yeah, that deep sense of calm you get when you're surrounded by nature's beauty. It's like the park itself is whispering, you know, slow down, breathe, you're home. I love that. For me, I think it would be the image of the red deer standing against the backdrop of the mountains. I like that. A symbol of the park's wild beauty. That's resilience. It's connection to something ancient. And both of those, the feeling and the image, they really capture the essence of Kill Learning National Park. They do. It's a place that nourishes the soul, ignites the imagination, and leaves a lasting imprint on the heart. Beautifully said. Well, on that note, we hope this deep dive into Killarney National Park has sparked your wanderlust and inspired you to plan your own adventure. Until next time. Keep exploring.